Word on the Run with Pastor Mario Swart. Good morning, beloved. This morning, your Word on the Run. We are busy speaking about an abundant life. And we have already said that we need to ask ourselves four questions. Who am I? What am I? Where am I? And where do I really want to be? And then we've given a second key for an abundant life. And that is that we should take responsibility. That we should take responsibility for our lives. That we should realize we are not victims of our circumstances. And, uh, but we are, um, the, the, according to our choices, we become uh, uh, what we are and what we're supposed to be by making the right choices. So um, you and I need to know that even if we make the right choices, still negative things may happen. Still, we might end up in circumstances, although we made the right choices. And that's exactly what happened to Joseph. Although he made the right choice, he ended up in jail. And that's what Genesis 39 from verse 20 teaches us, that he was put in jail, uh, although he made the right choice, and uh, that he ended up in jail. And, but the Lord was with Joseph, says verse 31. Genesis 39 verse 21 says, But the Lord was with, with Joseph, and he gave him favor, and he gave him favor in the eyes even of the ones in charge of the prison. So he gave him favor in spite of. But now, you know, we must not do blame shifting. We must keep ourselves from blame shifting. And somebody said uh, this so well. He said, when you blame others, you give up your power to change. When you blame others, you give up the power to change. Now, Joseph decided not to blame his family, not to blame the Midianites, not to blame uh, Potiphar's wife, not to blame uh, other people for his circumstances. He allowed God to pro make him prosper in spite of the circumstances. We must not be like Adam. You know what? The moment Adam was in trouble, he blamed Eve, and Eve blamed the snake, and the snake didn't have a leg to stand on. Now, I say this in a, in a, in a, a light-hearted manner, but there's, there's a still a very serious lesson to learn that you and I must not blame others because then we give up the power to change. The moment we say it's that guy, that guy, and that guy, it's then that we don't have the, the power to change and we're actually giving the power into other people's hands. But now God wants to give you the power to change and he wants you to take responsibility in spite of the circumstances. The example that we have is the example of the prodigal son. The Bible says in Luke chapter 15 verse 17, he says, Then when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father have enough food and even food to spare, but I am perishing, I'm dying over here of hunger. I will get up. I will get up and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. So you and I must say, even if I have to start over, but I'm getting up. Even if I have to start from, from the bottom, I'm getting up. Even if I have to start afresh, I am getting up. It's time to rebuild your self-respect and your self-image. It's time to say, yes, the devil has come to steal and destroy. In John 10 verse 10, the Bible says, the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I came that you might have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full and overflowing. So the question is, to what extent did the devil succeed in stealing your self-respect? In what extent and to what extent has he succeeded in stealing your and, and robbing you from your self-image? And this is where you need to say, I'm going to get out of this and I'm going to get up and I'm going to take back what the devil has stolen from me. Now, Brian Tracy said this, he says, disciplining yourself to do what you know is right and important, although difficult, is the high road to pride, self-esteem, and personal satisfaction. So you and I must get back to where I have and where I'm supposed to be full of self-esteem and personal satisfaction. 
a woman by the name of Joan Didion, she said, the willingness to accept responsibility to, for one's own life is the source from which self-respect springs. So your self-respect is going to be that when you get up and you start achieving one after the other different goals, it's then that your self-respect will come back. It's then that you will feel good about yourself and you start being the person that God wants you to be. So stop being a, and have a, a victim mentality. Can I say this again? Stop having a victim mentality and stop blaming others. So take responsibility and come back to where you are in good relationship, where you have good ambitions again. Stop staying within the, 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 the heartbreaking situation and come out of it and start being wise and start being full of responsibility and take ownership. And the result is going to be this. You will feel better about yourself. You will not be um, uh, dependent on others and especially the response of others or even uh, that they uh, approve. So you won't be res uh, uh, dependent on the approval of others. Your inner self will be built up and you will be stable and you will be positive and you will say to yourself that with my God I can do this. Listen to 2 Samuel 22 verse 30. He says, in your strength I can crush an army and with my God I I can scale any wall. Let us pray. Father God, I pray for people that at this moment they find themselves in a, in a very low self-esteem with a bad self-image. And I pray that people will rise up and that they will start taking responsibility and that one by one they will have victories and that they will eventually be uh, able to say, with my God and the strength that he gives me, I can crush an army. And with my God, I can scale a wall. I can jump over a wall. I pray that your name will be glorious in each life and that each one will take uh, into possession that abundant life that you have for them. Let your name be glorified. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.